Okay, I'm about to drop a hot take here, and hear me out. I think what we call independence on drums is a myth, and as a concept, it doesn't help us get any closer to playing drums. I'll explain. I think what we call independence is actually a mostly unrelated set of skills. Being able to improvise with the hands and feet during a swing beat. Being able to play a mambo with clave in the left foot. Being able to improvise with a kick drum while keeping a groove going. Being able to play around the rest of the kit with eight notes in the hats. Or being able to do this thing that people like Marcus Gilmore and Dan Weiss do. I think each of these is its own separate skill. And to get good at all of them, you'd be better off practicing each on its own terms until you mastered it, then moving on to the next one. I think when we practice generalized ideas, like the Alan Dawson rudimental ritual, or something I like to do, which is dotted eights in the left foot while I play a groove, those are idea generators. And they do a pretty specific thing, which is to generate ideas and give us new feelings on the kit. And that we shouldn't pretend that they're going to help us improve something like this, which is 95% of what you're going to get paid for if you're a working drummer. Oh, we should back up. My name is Nate, and people call me the 80-20 drummer. And it's probably true that over the years, people have expected certain contrarian hot takes from me. Anyway, on this channel, we dig a little deeper and try to ask some of the harder questions about drums. And today, I'm gonna to make the case that independence should not exist as a meta concept in drums. And I'll let you know what that nerdy word means. Today on 80-20, is independence on drums a myth? Stay tuned. And I should also say right up front that around 3 p.m. yesterday, I had this idea and made a post about it on my community page on YouTube. Just a few minutes later, I went to check my Instagram and saw this from my friend Brandon Scott, you who's been on the podcast, and Ellis Dapario Sibiriano, who should definitely come on the podcast. You can do the basics, but you keep playing the same beats and feels over and over again. Independence will take you to the next level. So my friends at Jomir have this coming out, and I'll tell you right up top, I'm sure this will be excellent. I'll probably check it out for myself. Any opinions I have about the semantics of what independence is don't detract one bit from the fact that Siberiano is a really talented guy, and I'm sure whatever's in this course will be excellent. With that out of the way, let's talk a little history. And this is Nate is pretty sure but didn't look it up history. Around the 1950s, there was a jazz drummer named Jim Chapin. He was a huge fan of the bebop drummers, like Kenny Clark, Philly Joe Jones, Max Roach, Art Taylor, and the like. Eventually, I say, but you know, everything we just did, you can find all that right here in this book, Jim Chapin. And let me tell you why, because Jim Chapin, all he did was go around, copped all the ideas from all the cats and put it in a book. And he observed these jazz greats and realized something. Drummers needed a new skill to maintain a swing beat on the right cymbal while being able to play phrases with the left hand and right foot. And he further realized that by practicing more complex beats than he'd need in real life, he'd be able to play real life jazz beats with ease. Legend has it that Chapin was so early to the concept that most drum students of the day couldn't do what he did, and that kind of made him a legend. And so coordinated independence was born, and Chapin's book, Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drummer. And I've got my own history with this book. When I was just getting into jazz drumming, a teacher at a music camp gave me Chapin's book, and after a few days with it, I felt like I had a superpower. I felt like everything else got easier. And this, friends, is what we call a meta-concept. Or I call it, at least. It's when you take a bunch of seemingly separate instances of something, for instance, playing the offbeat of three during a jazz beat, and playing a four-and in a jazz beat, and categorize them together by a common thread. In this case, being able to improvise with the snare hand and bass drum foot while maintaining the swing beat with the other two limbs. Here's a quick exercise to get the idea of what I mean. And if you'd like a free transcription of this and the other exercises in the lesson, you can get that by clicking below the player and telling us where to send it on the next page. I'm playing downbeats on the snare, then offbeats. Next, I'll transition to offbeats, then this ba da The idea of a meta exercise is that by grouping all these concepts together and pulling out the essential thing about them, you can save a lot of time over just practicing them as you might encounter them in the wild. 
It's such a powerful concept, it's worth examining where we might see it otherwise. And one of my favorite examples is language learning. Say you're learning Spanish, the native language of one Mr. Stepario Siberiano, who should come on the podcast, and you want to know how to say you would practice drums today. Yo practicaría batería hoy. Okay, now say I want to say I would go to the movies if it were sunny. Iría al cine si hiciera sol. Then a linguist comes along and observes, these two things are similar. They're both saying you would do something. What if we came up with a category for this? And they did, the subjunctive tense. I would, you would, etc. And in Spanish, they don't have the word would, like we just tack on in English. Instead, they add a different ending to their verbs. With some exceptions, it's usually the same ending. Take whatever you are going to do and add an IA at the end. Ia, I would talk, hablaría, I would go, iría, etc. So by knowing that general rule, you can chunk a lot of individual instances you'd otherwise have to learn one by one. That's why grammatical rules are meta-concepts. Another useful meta-concept in drums is something like Gary Chester's new breed. Loosely, it's the idea that you get a beat going on some part of the kit, and you should be able to play independent stuff with a kick drum foot against that. One special case of that is David Garibaldi's paradiddles, with something like a kick grid underneath like this. As a next step, we improvise idiomatic kick patterns while we maintain that paradiddle thing. Another one I like is this ostinato, which appears in my groove course. The meta concept here is that being able to keep a groove ostinato and improvise kick patterns is probably a good thing. Practicing that as a concept will incept greater creativity and freedom into a lot of your playing because you're improving your aptitude at something that generalizes really well to what you'll do in real life. Remember when I said this is the beat you'll do 95% of the time if you want to make money playing in real life? Well, that Gary Chester meta concept will help. So where's my disagreement with big independence? Well, I'm not sure if we got right down to it, there's a big one. Like, if we sat some of the great drummers down and really explained my position, maybe they'd agree. But the crux of my disagreement is the concept of global independence is taking the meta concept too far. Remember, a meta concept is useful when it saves you time by chunking a bunch of useful instances together. So you can get a lot of reps learning something that might not occur as often if you were just waiting to see it in the wild. Keyword, useful instances. Because we could also dream up meta concepts that lose their usefulness because they don't save you any time over just practicing a bunch of individual instances. Or because they capture something that doesn't have any real utility to your skill. Suppose instead of grouping categories of verb tenses together in language learning, we went too broad with something like tongue exercises. We figured, hey, in different languages, you sometimes have to move your tongue in unfamiliar ways. So let's come up with a book of tongue warm-ups that we have to practice before we learn any new language. Now imagine people started buying the book and the concept took off. Then we'd have this rogue concept of tongue twisting that people were spending time and money on as if it were its own thing. Would it help with pronouncing languages? Maybe. But would it save time over just pronouncing individual words from the languages you wanted to learn? My guess is no. And that's what I think is happening with the overarching term independence. Say you want to learn a left foot clave, as I'm doing here, and as will be transcribed for you in the free transcription available for download below the video player. you'd probably be best simplifying it, then adding the limbs back in one by one, maybe in kind of idiomatic ways. Say the next month you wanted to learn to play swing beats and play ideas like these against the swing ride cymbal beat and the left foot on two and four. You probably do best by doing as John Riley recommends, and starting with the beat, then adding just the left hand, then the right foot, etc. But is there a meta concept you can pull out from amongst those that's more efficient than just learning them one by one? I'd say no. Do you guys need more examples of this? I feel like I'm gonna get comments like, yeah, that's one example, but what about X, Y, Z? But I'm gonna leave it there because otherwise this video is gonna be way too long. You'll just have to trust me that there are plenty of other instances. And I bet you can think of some of them yourself. Okay, but so what? You have this umbrella term, independence, and if you're a good teacher, you probably use that word, but then still just deal with most types of independence individually, right? So what's wrong with the term? Well, that's a fair point. And this is probably pretty close to what the originators of the original term independence did in their actual teaching. From Chapin to Chester to Chafee, they probably realized the word independence was 
good for marketing, but they dealt with the specific skills under that umbrella in sufficient depth. But here's where I think the umbrella turn can be potentially harmful. Say independence is a big meta concept, and you get beginners working on their independence. All under the impression that it's important to spend their time doing stuff like this, but sloppily because they think by doing sloppy independency stuff, it's going to generalize to their playing by osmosis and make them better. But what they should really be spending time on is figuring out what type of music they want to play and learning to groove and play cleanly in that style. If it's funk, they should focus on playing a clean, grooving beat and eventually becoming independent within it so they can feel free. If it's jazz, they should focus on playing a clean, swinging jazz beat work their way up to independence in the swing beat so they can swing with more freedom. But there's one more, but what about, I can hear you raise it. I can hear you guys before you even comment. It's this thing John Riley talked about on my podcast. Uh, actually, I spent two hours on it last night playing these phrases over a, over a, a seven clave. I'm trying to find new things. I'm trying to keep practicing fresh. I'm trying to challenge myself and some control, some new kind of control will be an outgrowth of this, whether it has anything to do with seven or not. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, my goals are modest, but also my goal is to stay engaged in growing. And this exercise from the end of my group coaching curriculum. Sometimes it's fun and useful to practice something that challenges your body's ability to play things at the same time. To take yourself out of your comfort zone and spark new ideas. But two big caveats about that. First, I think this is for advanced players, i.e. players who can already play functional grooves and fills and are fluent in their genre of choice. Second, this stuff is explicitly an idea generator. We practice this stuff because maybe it will come out in our improvisation. But we're not pretending we need this stuff to play rock or funk. A swing, especially at a functional level. Is that how you get the gig? Pues hicimos una cosa. Espero que a ustedes les gustó esta lección. Y si tienes comentario, por favor déjalo debajo del video. Estas lecciones siempre me divierten. Y nos vemos muy pronto en otra lección de la semana. Adiós.